throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Quick disclaimer, due to the vast number of dialects in the Gaelic language, the pronunciation for any given word may vary. I'm not a linguist expert, but did a fair amount of research for this show. Enjoy! The peoples of ancient Ireland told tales of warriors bound by no tribe or nation, living by their own laws, yet honored and feared by the rest of society. These warriors formed loose-knit groups of their own, called the Fianna, or Fenians, who would act as conscripts, battling invading forces on the behalf of Irish kings. One such band was Clan Boishna, led by a man named Cool McTrenmore, a mighty combatant who served under King Khan of the Hundred Battles. Cool fell deeply in love with a woman named Morna Moonkeem, a daughter of the druid Taig Njinuada. Kool requested Morna's hand in marriage, but was refused by Taig, for the druid had foreseen that the marriage of his daughter would lead to the loss of his home on the hill of Almu. But the lovers ran off together in secrecy, and the enraged Taig went to the king and told him of the abduction of Morna. Khan of the Hundred Battles declared Kool an outlaw for refusing to relinquish Morna, and waged war on the warrior and his followers with the aid from their sworn enemy, Clan Morna. Kool gave his life during the Battle of Nuka at the Barony of Castle Knock, where his mortal enemy, Gol McMorna, slew him and took over leadership of the Fianna. Kool was dead, but Morna was carrying his child. Taig spurned his daughter and began to rally his followers, urging them to burn Morna at the stake. But the king intervened, sending her to live with her sister-in-law, the druid Bommel, and her husband, Fiacol Makorna. There Morna gave birth to a son she named Denny. But when his hair one day turned as white as snow, he was given a new name, Finn, Finn Makul. Though Khan gave Morna and her child amnesty, that would not stop Gol and his followers from pursuing their lifelong enemies. Before the lad was big enough to stand, he was taken from his mother and raised by Bommel in the forest Slea of Bloom with the warrior Lea Lucra who trained Finn to be a cunning warrior and an exceptional hunter. Years passed, and Finn came under the tutelage of the poet Finnegus at the River Boyne. Finnegus had spent the last seven years of his life fishing for the fabled Salmon of Knowledge. For should a person catch and eat the fish, nothing would remain unknown to them. As Finnegus explained his goal to the youth, the line went taut, and lo and behold, the salmon in question was hooked on the other end. The poet quickly reeled the struggling fish onto the shore and had the lad prepare it for him. As the fish was cooking on the fire, Finn burned his thumb on the hot oil of the fish and instinctively put his burning thumb into his mouth. But in that very moment, Finn gained a clarity beyond anything any person had ever experienced. When Finnegus heard of this, he instructed his pupil to eat the salmon for himself, for it was Finn's destiny, not his own. Finn bade his master's instruction and ate the salmon of knowledge. In doing so, Finn became all-knowing. From that day forth, Whenever Finn put his thumb in his mouth, he could see into the future and knew the fate of the world. 
armed with great strength, wisdom, and counsel from the gods. Finn became a peerless warrior in Ireland. He began to serve various kings under aliases, but without fail, the kings would each learn Finn's true identity and his lineage, and would send him away, fearing the wrath of Clan Morna. But Finn's chance to shine soon came when he arrived at the capital Tara, where the High King of Ireland sought aid against Aelin Macmichna the fire-breathing demon of the Tuatha Dé For twenty-three years, on the eve of Samhain, Aelin would pass from the other world and arrive at Tara, playing his dulcimer with such enthusiasm it made everyone in the immediate vicinity fall fast asleep. Once Aelin had cast all of the King's Guard asleep, he would set the great halls of Tara aflame with his scorching breath, leaving naught but burning cinders in his wake. With the aid of a magical spear called the Burga, Fian overcame the music of the harp and the creature's fiery wrath, and he slew Aelin as the mortal world made the supernatural being slower, more vulnerable. With his slaying of Aelin the Burner, Finn's nobility was recognized, and Gol McMorna stepped aside to allow Finn to assume his rightful place as leader of the Fianna. Finn lived a life full of adventure, slaying vicious monsters and ridding the land of plagues. Finn would also go on to have a number of wives, but his most famous wife was Sive. Saev was once a beautiful woman, who was transformed into a deer by the druid Ferdorek when she spurned his proposal of marriage. While out hunting, the hounds of Finn, Bran and Skyalang, recognized the deer as once a human being, as they too had once been human themselves. When the hounds brought the deer to Finn, she was immediately returned to her human form and became his wife. But the druid Fordoric returned, however, and subsequently turned Sive into a deer once more, and she vanished into the forest forever. Finn hunted for her day and night, but to no avail. The hounds Bran and Skyalang would, however, discover Finn and Sive's son, Ashin, in the form of a fawn. He was transformed into a child, and Ashin went on to become one of the greatest of the Fianna. Years later, the reigning High King Cormac McGaird promised Finn the hand of his daughter Grania. He was not to be, however, as Grania and Yarmud Udubna, another of the Fianna, had eloped with Finn in hot pursuit. The matter was resolved when Finn allowed the lovers to be together, only for him to take revenge later on by not using his powers to heal Jarmud and prevent his death after he had been gored by a boar. As the legends of Finn would grow, so too would the man himself. Later stories in Irish folklore depict Finn as an immense giant who shaped the land of Ireland. He made the giant's causeway so as to cross the sea to Scotland without getting his feet wet. Another legend tells of how he threw a massive section of land into the sea at an enemy. That piece of land henceforth became the Isle of Man, and the hole left behind became Loch Nee. Finn's legend would spread all over the British Isles and attracted the attention of a massive Scottish Bogan giant named Ben and Donner, who longed to fight Finn and gain his power. Finn turned to his then wife Una for aid in the matter. The clever Una hatched a scheme and dressed her husband as an infant and placed him in a massive cradle. When Ben and Donner crossed the giant's causeway looking for Finn, Una told him her husband was away, hunting, but he was welcome to wait in her home. 
Ben Adonner was instantly fooled, thinking Finn to indeed be a child. Why, that's the biggest baby I've ever seen! Oi, the lot takes after his father. Are you hungry? Una offered her savage guest a griddle cake, and he accepted, fully unaware that the pastry had cast iron baked into the center. As Ben and Donner bit into the griddle cake, his teeth chipped against the iron. Don't be such a weakling. My husband, even our son, eats those cakes with glee. The disguised Finn proceeded to eat a griddle cake without iron in front of the disbelieving giant. Why, that's the strongest baby that's ever been! Ben and Donner reached over to examine the faux infant's teeth, and Finn chomped down hard on the brute's fingers, causing him to howl in pain. In fear and disbelief, Ben and Donner fled as fast as his feet could carry him out of the house and across the giant's causeway. <laughs> Oi, where are you going? Don't you want to meet Finn? If the baby is that strong, I don't want to meet his father. Finn McCool's legend was celebrated throughout Ireland for his wit and for his prowess in battle. But the hero's time would indeed come to an end. A number of legends are told of how the mighty Finn McCool died. Some say he was slain by the vengeful descendants of Gol McMorna. Others say he was decapitated by Alec McDubrin, either in battle or after a failed attempt to jump across the River Boyne. But many believe that Finn is not dead. He's merely sleeping with the Fianna in a cave until the hunting horn of the Fianna the Dord Fion is sounded three times. Then, and only then, will he return and defend Ireland in the hour of her greatest need.